Hi, teachers. Today, I'm here to talk to you about parent-teacher conferences and um, what you can do and what your options are in terms of sending out Google Meet links. Um, and this is particularly for the use of Google Meet. Um, what you can do to schedule meetings and how you can really run these smoothly um, with out having to track multiple calendar uh, links. So um, one way that you can definitely start is generating Google Meet links. So um, I'm in a Google meeting right now, but I'm going to show you how to generate a new link. I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to navigate to meet.google.com slash new. When I do this, um, this is helping me generate a brand new meeting link. So um, Google Meet has created this link here in the address bar. And what this has done for me is this has created a new meeting um, without having to type in um, a nickname code, which is what I've done in another meeting. And what that looks like, what the difference is, is if I go into my apps launcher and I click on meet, I'm brought to the meet homepage, right? And I can click join or start a meeting. And now it's asking me to leave a code or a nickname that I have created. So it's actually more secure if you have Google create the code for you because the code is sort of random and it's a sequence of letters and it's something that's unique. Um, so I would recommend going to meet.google.com slash new and Google Meet will generate a code for you. So um, I'm going to point you toward a couple of things here. This is ready to, um, to have you join the meeting, but you might see underneath meeting ready that there is your meeting link right there if you want to copy it from that screen and there's also this dial in option which is pretty cool i'll show you that feature in a few minutes um, but that allows your participants or people that you're inviting to the meeting to actually call in with their phone um, and this is a really nice option to offer parents and it's a really nice way to still keep your meetings running smoothly on one app and not have to go and run to your classroom phone um, to call a parent especially if you're meeting with a whole team of people, it's nice if the parent has that option and if teachers have that option. So I'm going to join the meeting now and I'm seeing some different things when I click join meeting. Um, I have share this info with people you want in the meeting. I can click this button really quickly to copy the joining info. Um, and what that does is it allows me to maybe send out an email to specific people. I would recommend against posting this meeting link publicly um, or on a school website or anything, don't do that because then other people will have access to your meeting link and sharing links is just not um, a great thing to do, especially in a school setting. You want to keep your audience small, especially for parent-teacher conferences. Make sure that you are just sending those links to parents um, and or students, depending on how you're running your conferences. So I can copy the joining info or I can also individually add people. Um, so I would do both of these things and here's how I would do it. If I were in parent-teacher conferences, right, which I will be in November. Um, so I'm going to copy the joining info for my parents um, and I teach sixth grade. So I would copy the joining info for parents and families in my homeroom. I would definitely wanna make sure that the emails are correct first. There are no typos or anything. Um, but once I copy that joining info for my homeroom, um, the parents have access to that link. I could also print the joining info and send it home in half sheets in kids' bags, um, whatever your school chooses to do, whatever your administrator um, tells you you can do there is good for communication. Um, then, so say I'm running a parent-teacher conference the day of, I have my first meeting, it's a 15 minute time slot, I'm in this meeting room right now. I have the parents. Um, I know that they have the joining info. I know that they've signed up for the meeting, um, but I might just want to give one more push and go back in to see that's this chat button here, show everyone. And I might want to just add people, right? So I'm actually going to type in a name um, and then individually add people as well. 
So if I'm not seeing that the parent is um, getting the link, I might want to add people um, and make sure that the parent has the link information. So that's one kind of trick you can use. If a parent's not joining, you can click add people again. It will send them an email notification with the link again. Um, and once parents join, um, then you can also remove them. I'm going to quickly show you how to remove somebody now. So I'm going to invite myself. I'm going to send myself an email. And I did get the email. It's right here. And I'm actually going to show this new message. This is my message. Join meeting. Right. So the message sort of looks like that. I'm inviting this person to the meeting. It shows the dial in number as well, which is really nice. So the parents also automatically have that phone number. And when you dial into a meeting, you also need the pin. So that's available too. So right now, my screen, because I'm joining the meeting, is showing this. I'm going to turn my camera off and everything. I'm going to join the call. So right now, my computer is smart, and um, Google is smart and knows that both of these accounts are me. So I see you next to the host name. So I'm hosting this meeting right now. But I've also just joined, so this is my other side here. So um, I'm talking to the parent, and I um, we're talking about their student and uh, how the year is going, and then we want to end the meeting. The parent can either hang up from the call, but you as a teacher don't want to hang up from the call. You actually want to keep this call open because this is your meeting room for all parents. Right. So um, and this is to limit the amount of hyperlinks you really have to deal with. So um, the parent can um, a parent or family member can hang up or I can in the participants over here, press this drop down and I can press remove here. There are four icons. One of them is pin. One of them is mute. One of them is hide. And the one all the way to the right is remove from meeting. So I'm going to remove them from the call now. OK, so as you have parents joining your meeting, as you need to end meetings, you, you can kind of wrap that up and say, OK, I'm going to remove you from the meeting now. It's great meeting with you. And then you can remove them from the call before you admit another parent. So when another parent wants to join, um, there will be a window that pops up on your screen that says, do you want to admit this person into the meeting? Um, and. So sometimes your parent teacher conference can go a little bit over depending on uh, what you're talking about and how the conversation's going, what the parent or family needs. So if you experience that um, and you're a middle school teacher, maybe you work on a team like I do, um, if you need to start a new meeting with another parent, you can have a team member start that meeting um, and actually manually add that parent and send them their link instead of yours. And this is one major way that I would recommend kind of handling that time frame, especially if you want to be sensitive to families' needs. Obviously, the time does need to be um, a little bit cut short because there are virtual meetings. But um, if you have that waiting time, you can get a team member to actually hop on and say, OK, we go to meet.google.com slash new. And I'm going to start the meeting with this next person that just try to join yours, even though you're not quite done yet with that meeting. And then they can join that meeting, your team member, um, and they can add the parent to that new meeting. So until you're ready to join um, your team member and the next parent, you can kind of wrap things up with the previous parent. Um, and that's really important too, because um, we are in a time that's a pandemic and um, parents really need us right now and they might want to spend a couple extra minutes with you um, and they they need to know how their kids doing in school and they can't come into the school right now so you might want to spend a couple extra minutes there so I would suggest um, having three two to three I have three team members um, I would suggest having a few computers out two to three um, at least so that you can have team members help you with that time management um, of wrapping up that phone call, starting a different meeting. Also, so that um, we have three different home rooms in the sixth grade. Um, it's also so that different parents can have different links to meetings. So my colleague will send out their Google Meeting Room link. I will send out my Google Meeting Room link. 
and my third colleague will send out a third link. So we're only really having to deal with three total links um, for the whole grade. Um, and that's a really nice way to sort of condense all of the different things we have to keep track of. Having three links is way easier um, and allows us to have a lot more control and allows us to help parents troubleshoot a lot better. So um, those are a few of my tips. I did, I did draw this out on a piece of paper. I had like an epiphany today and I said, okay, we're gonna have three different meeting links here and I'm gonna send out the links in particular emails to particular parents and we're gonna have these ready and then we're gonna switch. So it's really about how you want to structure your parent-teacher conferences with your teammates. Um, if you are a teacher that is in a classroom um, that has way less students, then um, I might suggest using Google Calendar to send out links instead because having 10 to 15 time slots on your Google Calendar looks very different from having 40 events in one day. Um, so just be considering how you want to do that. And um, remember that the meeting details down here will show you the Google Meet link should you need it again. Um, the dial-in number is here. Oh, I did want to show you the dial-in number and how that does work. Okay, so I'm going to remove myself from the meeting here. Remove. And I'm actually going to dial in right now on my phone so that you can see what that looks like live. So I have my phone here and I'm going to open it and I'm going to call this number. Plus one, nine, two, nine, three, two, four. 1604. So I have the number in my phone here. I've just typed that in. I'm going to call it and I'm going to put it on speaker so you can hear what. Enter the meeting pin followed by the pound key. So I'm entering the meeting pin. Thank you. You're joining a call with one other person. Okay, I muted my, my Google Meet call, but you can see that on my screen here, I see that my participant is just by phone. I can tell when they're talking because this bubble sort of gets bigger. No, you won't be able to see them, but some families might only have access to their phone. Um, and being able to call into a meeting is huge for a lot of different families. Um, so this just creates more equity when you're thinking about your parent-teacher conferences and um, aligning different calls. So if people don't necessarily have a device to call you from, um, but you still want to run your meetings through Google Meet, through your school account, you can definitely still do that. So if email fails, your phone is still an option or their phone is still an option. Um, so in whatever way you want to communicate your links to the parents, don't forget to include the PIN and the dial-in number. You need both. Okay, I'm going to hang up now on my phone. And I can see that this person has left the meeting. Um, so don't forget to include that information um, when you send out that information to parents. Don't forget to talk to your team members and your administrators about like kind of how you want to arrange your meetings. But I wanted to tell you all this so that you could avoid having so many different events in your Google Calendar. Because we do know at this point that we can add video conferencing to Google Calendar you could definitely still create your meetings um, and your links through that. Um, and that's perfectly fine too. There are many different ways to create Google meeting links. So if you want this in your calendar, that's an option, but I'm thinking of specifically classroom teachers and going from meeting to meeting on a parent teacher conference day. It ends up being a really long day. So um, if you have any feedback for me, please let me know. But this was one way that I could kind of think of um, and I wanted to show you how to add people, remove people, and how to access the meet link information um, because parents also need to know that in order to join the meeting. So thank you for your time and uh, good luck with parent-teacher conferences. Bye.